when we celebrate the vernal equinox. Hi, Hillary. It is now the time of the changing seasons. The wheel rotates, the cycle continues as, as we shift. Hi, everybody. It's I, Hannah Ruhama, the kombucha mama, mother to mazillions of bacteria around the world. Maybe you have some of my bacteria in your house right now. It could be in the form of a kombucha scoby. It could be a jun culture. It could be milk kefir or water kefir, aka tibicos. No matter what, just know that in my heart, I'm sending you love and I so appreciate um, the ability to enrich, enliven, and bring health to people through our beautiful cultures. And culture is something I love to cultivate. And so it's really lovely that we are here at the equinox, the new moon, Lashana Tova, to all of my friends who celebrate. And for me, it is the vernal, sorry, autumnal equinox. And in the southern hemisphere, our friends in Australia, it is the vernal equinox and so as their days become longer ours become shorter as we march our way towards going within the harvest is here and so now is the perfect time to reinvigorate your fermentation practice it's also a great time to start thinking about the different ways in which we nourish our bodies especially because we start looking for those comfort foods and different things that make us feel really good inside. And I just wanna say hello to everybody who's joining us. Welcome, good to have you here. And I'm super excited about my guest today. Um, my guest is Mathieu um, from, he is from the south of France and he now lives in South America. And so Mathieu, go ahead and request to join and we'll bring you on here. And he really, has such a passion for food and health. It's a wonderful intersection. And so I'm really excited to bring him on today. Bienvenue. Comment ça va? Bonjour. Hey, bonjour. How are you, Mathieu? I'm good, I'm good. How are you, Anna? I'm wonderful. And so for those who don't know you, you are the glucose chef and you have a really neat story, a, uh, a food story, a culinary story, a travel story. Tell us a little bit about your background. We'd love to hear where you're from. Of course, of course. So as I'm sure everybody can notice, I'm French because I have a, some, of, some accent. Uh, <laughs> I try to do my best in English. If something is not very clear, just let me know. Uh, so, but I was born in the south of France in, uh, in, in, in Bordeaux uh, and I was raised in the vineyard of my parents, so really immersed into the wine uh, culture and gastronomy culture. So it was really, uh, I think, my passion from, for, for food and for culinary pleasures come from here. Although then after that, I study, I was kind of nerdy, so I think I was, I, I keep going into the the scientific world, so I study chemistry and 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 follow my life into a very interesting and challenging corporate world <laughs> that uh, significantly affect my health. I think <laughs> I would say, <laughs> which turned me. I mean, like a couple of years ago, three years ago, uh, obliged me to look into my health and understanding what was going on with my body and what, what the way I was feeling and the way I, I was. I was, uh, I would say, uh, the way that the, the, the world was affecting my body. So I, I really turned into, uh, I would say, a, a cornerstone in my life and start looking more, a little bit more inside more than outside. Uh, so I, 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 I move out of my corporate world and start the glucose chef, uh, leveraging my scientific background, but also my passion for food. <laughs> Well, that's because a wonderful I'm way to marry your passions, and who doesn't love to enjoy that on the palate? However, you are not located in France anymore. Tell us a little bit about how you ended up in South America. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, I'm, I mean, in, 
I li I'm currently living in Chile, although now I'm in Brazil. I have the chance to be in Brazil. Uh, but you see a little bit the environment. I won't turn the, the camera because it's very, very bright outside, so you won't see it. <laughs> but, but it's very warm. And, 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 and indeed, uh, during my corporate career, I travel a lot, uh, the world, I discover South America. I, I had the chance to, to live in Mexico, Chile, Argentina. And, and I finally settled down in Chile, where I'm, current, uh, where I'm, where I'm currently living which was also a very, very interesting, uh, I would say culinary experience because although in France we have a deep and rich culinary culture, uh, it's also a country where we receive lots of influence from different uh, culture and part of the world. So it was very interesting for me as a culinary experience to experience how do we eat in Mexico and how do we eat in Argentina and, and bring all that together and, 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 and I try to promote the French lifestyle and the culinary, uh, I would say, experience of, of the French. However, if people are following me and look at my recipes, you can always see that there is some tweaks from different uh, influence of, of where I've lived or where, where I've been passionate about discovering the way that people is eating all around the world because we, we all have very interesting uh, way of feeding ourselves. <laughs> J'adore ce mélange. Me encanta esta mezcla porque no somos solamente una cosa. Uh, somos muchas cosas. And so we're so many different things and I love diversity. So tell us a little bit. So what is this French way of eating? I mean, in my imagination, I'm thinking like cheese and baguettes and wine. Is that what it is? Yes, I mean, I mean, there is one one interesting aspect around the the French culinary culture that that turned to create the what we call the French paradox. So the French paradox is, if you look about what people in France are eating and and the way that people are living, you see that the French have generally low obesity rates, uh, nearly half of the U.S. <laughs> and low uh, diabetes rates. So, and it's less than half of the US. Uh, so France has only 5% of diabetes versus 11% of diagnostic diabetes in the US. Although it's growing in the US and it's pretty stable in, in France. So with my scientific background, I start digging into that French paradox and, and try to understand why, why is that? Why is the, that the French eating rich, tasty, fatty, lots of fat from animal sources in our in, in our plates and say how, how can they even possible so and with my scientific background looking to the, the that figure out that that's not really a paradox when you look about what the french are eating we're eating something i mean we're eating food that keep our blood sugar much more stable than i would say the average American diet. So that explains why we have less metabolic disease and we have less glucose spikes and then less, uh, less issue with our health related to, to, to nutrition. Well, so, so do you think, it, I'm sorry, were you saying, it, is it just you're consuming less sugar or the foods aren't as processed or there's not glyphosate all over your wheat? Like what, what sort of factors are you attributing um, the ability to eat what we consider sort of a rich diet um, and yet still not have these same issues that Americans struggle with. Yeah, in my, in my analysis and, and, and generally say that there is like four main reasons. First, I would say that French uh, traditional, I would say traditional, because obviously if you look about the French culture today, you see high penetration of processed food and you see, there is junk food in France too. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no discussion around that. But if you look, at, if you look about traditional way of eating in France, you will see that the French are focused on natural food more than processed food. Obviously, you can go to the supermarket mm -hmm. and find something to affect your health without any issues. But if you look about the way that the tra the, the, the French traditionally eat, you will see raw ingredients. Uh, lots of food come from the market and not the supermarket. So there is a, a, a much closer relationship between our plates and nature. Which j'adore cette chose. Quand j'ai <laughs> habité au Aurillac, uh, uh -huh. tous les jours, nous marchons au marché, premier au boulanger, enfin exactly. le, le boucherie. 
Uh, you know, so cada día tuvimos que caminarnos para comprar cada, la, todas las cosas que vamos a comer en este día. Y me encanta esta fresca, esta uh, manera de vida que es muy diferente que aquí en los Estados Unidos, donde siempre estamos en los mercados grandes y muchas veces es algo especial irnos al farmer's market. So the farmer's market tends to become like this special treat as opposed to how we typically live our lives. And we tend to go to these huge supermarkets where the produce has been picked ages ago and it's been preserved and sprayed so that by the time it reaches you, it still hasn't spoiled. And yet that, of course, has an impact on, on how we consume those foods, even if we think we're choosing fresh things. Exactly. And, 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 and that first reason, I mean, more natural food, I mean, explain many different aspects between the metabolic situation of the French versus maybe other cultures or every other, other countries, because indeed less process, it's less thing that have been aggregated or artificial processes that have been run into onto the natural ingredients. So you, you bring into your body much less chemicals. You also eat more in season because if you go to the markets instead of supermarket, you eat in season. So you get more nutritional, uh, I mean, um, higher nutritional content in the food that you're eating. And I mean, it makes, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, no, no brainer, I would say. And the second reason I was going to say is also, if you look about the French diet, it's high in fat protein and fibers so and those three things are the the thing that we need <laughs> our, our metabolism need to keep our blood sugar stable obviously if you go for uh high carb very highly processed carbs that's going to spike your glucose and and build up uh day after day if you eat that all uh, i mean every day uh build up into, into some kind of metabolic disease which when you look at the what the french eat generally is meats vegetables uh dairies, fat, I mean, and, and, and there is a very high content of, car of uh, fat, sorry, in the, in, the, in the French dishes. And I was looking at stat around what the French eat. And, and generally in France, around 40% of the calorie that we eat come from fat. Well, and here, this is the lie in the United States, right? We've since learned that scientists were paid off in order to lie so that the sugar industry could claim that it was fat that makes you fat. If we just apply a little bit of logic, what, what do we put in the oil lamp? It's fat, right? So fat <laughs> is fuel. Fat is energy for us to burn. And we need to replenish it because we burn through it so cleanly. Whereas carbs, yes, they're also energy, but they tend to stick to our bodies or like you're talking about glucose, Chef, right? So let's, let's dive in a little bit more onto the glucose piece. Um, what is, so what does this have to do? Why is it that getting your calories from carbs, which is also a form of energy, why does that create such a negative impact in the body? Excellent question. <laughs> so the, the, the big issue that we have is in, in fact to Feed, um, to fuel our body, we, we have different options and our body can function with different sources of energy. We can function with carbs and we can function with fat and, and our body process, can process both. But the, and, and I would say naturally, if you look about um, centuries ago, what, we, what, what were we eating? We were eating animals that we were hunting and plants that we were gathering. And the carbs, I mean, the carbs that we, the way that we know the carbs today were not available centuries ago. So we were functioning, our body were, were used to function with the protein intake and the fat intake more than the carb intake. And we had carbs in our diet, but more seasonally. Obviously, when it was harvesting season, you get all the fruit and then we were loading into carbs and our body, what, what do our body do with carbs? You take those carbs, breaking down into glucose, raise our blood blood sugar in our in our in our in our body and automatically our body responds to those spikes to store that energy because basically glucose in our in our vein is energy for our muscles but if we're not performing some kind of physical activity at that moment uh what our body going to do is store that energy for later and that's the whole problem that we have today if we have a high carbs diet our body that are trained to survive and thrives in difficult environment 
are storing all that energy for later. The thing is, we never use it. <laughs> so, so moving, moving back to what the French are eating, we are eating much more fat, which not creating those glucose spike in our, in our, um, in our body. And so we avoid storing all that energy and, and, and not building up into metabolic disease over time. So that's the, that's the whole, the whole uh, thing behind the glucose chef. When we, t when we teach people to bring back a little bit to a more natural, or, or I would say traditional way of eating instead of going into that vein of super mega processed diets uh, that, that basically are killing ourselves. <laughs>